Hi, we're at the Shenzhen Convention and Exhibition Center, and there are multiple tech exhibitions happening at the same time here, and so many events that it's actually hard to figure out the exact names. More than that, it's not the only location in Shenzhen City where those events are happening at the moment. So we'll try to find interesting things and cover as many as we can. So let's get started. Small foreshadowing here. They are glasses, robots, machinery, drones, electronics, FDM 3D printers, metal 3D printers, resin 3D printers, 3D scanners, jaw-dropping 3D prints, filaments and consumables. Let's dive in and see what we can find. Our first interesting encounter was with VR glasses. There were 8 to 10 different companies in the same area, each with a small stand to showcase their products. We even found one with an English-speaking representative. Okay, can you introduce yourself and your company and what you are doing overall? Okay, so our company's name is Too Easy Teach and we are specializing in the VR, AR and the AI glasses, the ODMO. Yeah. And this is? This is v the VR. Okay. VR. This kind of looks like Apple product, similar, right? Yeah, it's more like the yeah. Vision Pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yes. Oh, that's pretty good. I can scroll it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I literally see my phone here. Yeah, you can play a video. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm not an expert in AR or VR, but it is exciting to see so many companies in one place. They're competing, they're innovating, and it feels like they're on a path to creating something truly useful in the future. Our next discovery combined healthcare and 3D printing. Our company name is WeSmart. We are from China. We are the 3D scanner for your food manufacturer. Mm -hmm. okay. So we product, our product is scanner, as you see, it's a laser mm -hmm. scanner for your food. So uh, am I right saying that it is a health sort of um, device where you can scan the food and make appropriate uh, footwear according to your diseases or health yeah. conditions, yes? Okay. Can we try it to make a video of how it actually works? Of do, course, do you have? of course. Okay. Yes, and you need to stand on it. Okay. okay. So... This is our scanner and this is the PC computer connecting it. Okay. We choose the language for English and the scan. We choose the mail. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. scanning. It's done. Finish. Finish okay. scanning. About two or three seconds Minutes to produce. We can get a report for your phone. Wow, food. that's cool. So, wow. Wait for, wait, 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 wait for a while. Okay. Next step first, we need to save your files. Okay. Save it. Yeah, and we have the entire thing. 3D model. Cool. Does it provide any like health advices or something like that? Or it is only 3D model? No. First, it's 3D model. We have three layers. OK. And you can get all the parameters of your food by into a in-source software design. OK. We made it. You design your, your, your in-source, mm -hmm. then print it. Turns out this company already has customers in Europe, and they've been working on their hardware and software for a while. They even sent me a report so I can design or order my own shoes or insoles. Next up, we stumbled onto a brand you'll definitely recognize. I don't think that we need to introduce you. Like, Creality is a pretty known brand in 3D printing. Like, it's here for many years, and you have pretty good 3D printers here. And can you tell me a bit more about your latest releases, like this K2 Plus and overall okay. your lineup? I think that's sort of pro lineup, right? Okay. So, like the K2 Plus is like our flagship modules of like our compact flagship 3D printers, mm -hmm. and we just released this like on 2024, mm -hmm. and we just released these two, the K2 and the K2 Pro, to like a, to have like a broadened lineup of our flagship series of okay. this K2 K2 3D printer. We just released them on 25th, just like two days ago. Ah, this one is just like yeah, two days ago? Yeah, we just released like two cool. days ago. May I ask you something? Bamboo Lab recently released similar size printers, and okay. do you have any plans how to compete with them? Do you plan to release like K3 lineup or something like that? Oh. 
absolutely we're gonna have like a, a following release module for like next year but i cannot tell yeah tell of you course i understand that information it's, it's probably and i cannot like, say like much against like our you know, like, so it's in work and you said 2026 yeah. right next year it's in the following year okay yeah i can not guarantee like maybe like 2026 or like 2027 maybe yeah. okay, okay i see anyway that's that's nice to hear that okay. you guys are working on new yeah. releases it's yeah. going to fall again oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yes right. thanks yeah we feel like we are in innovating like uh, all the new models for like our printers and our scanners and the reading printers we absolutely we're gonna like release the new models awesome yeah uh, and you have two brands here right now. You have Creality and the second. Yeah, the Pyocrate. Cool. And what about the Pyocrate? Oh, the Pyocrate. Is it, what's its target audience? Uh, it's, for, um, it's for the raising printer. Yeah, this, this is for the industry use as well. So, so this, is, this is, okay. Yeah, that's for the, for the shoe sole. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, for so the shoe sole. Ah, yeah. So it prints two at the same time. Yeah, exactly, for the shoe sole, because you need a, like a pair of that, right? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. that's smart. But like, why do you need two? Why don't you print them one by one? Efficiency. Ah, okay, that just yeah, speed up the efficiency. thing. Okay, so this, this second brand is mostly for resin. Yeah, for resin, yeah. I see, yeah, great. Okay. Engravers over there, so you can just... Oh, you have engravers Yeah, we got well? laser engravers over there, so yeah. Oh, cool. This is the latest model, though. You got, yeah, you got, it's, it's working and it's, Yeah, I see. It's, it's yeah. engraving something. How powerful is it? You got, you got a brand new design. It. It's 20 watts? Yeah, 20 watts. Up to 60. Up to 60 watts? Yeah, up to 60 watts. Okay. Oh, I see. And so, especially we got like a 3 So these farm. are Corex Y farm, right? Yeah. And um, it kind of reminds me the P1P. Yeah, that's, that's, a old, that's a old model. Yeah. Is, it, is it recent release? This one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm 300, we just released this. So it's like a more reliable. And to be fair, like you can see the name is 300, right? Uh -huh. But it's only for the length and the width 300. Yeah, but, I see the height. Yeah, but the so height cheap. is 200. Yeah. So we got like a, we, we got like a lot of customers who just, they say they don't care like too much about the height. Yeah, but like we reduce the height. Overall, I don't think it matters because there is, um, needed size for everyone if you want bigger size get a yeah, bigger printer. yeah exactly so, so we reduce the height and we just increase the reliability yeah. yeah 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 okay and then probably reducing the height you got more stiffer structure yeah, exactly. right? okay i yeah. see that's probably it yes right? that's probably all of it mm, yeah. yep Thank then we got a time. okay thanks for you though. yeah nice to meet you yeah yeah after that, we dove into the machinery section, and honestly, it felt like walking at a mini industrial fair inside the exhibition. There were booths packed with measurement tools that used precise laser systems, sorting mechanisms that looked like they belonged on an automated factory line, and tables filled with showcase for the prints. We are talking metal, sand, plastic, basically every material you can imagine, all turned into parts and models that looked meticulously crafted, almost like art pieces. Same booths focused on high precision engineering, you could see gears, molds, and components cut with insane details. Others were more about scale, giant printed objects that made you stop and wonder, okay, how did they actually ship it here? It was a good mix of industrial series and just plain fun to look at. I also got the chance to try out a few 3D scanners and what really surprised me is how effortlessly they handled shiny metallic surfaces. Usually scanners struggle with reflections, but these ones picked up details without any problem. Holding the scanner and watching a digital model appear live on the screen was honestly pretty satisfying. It felt futuristic and super practical at the same time. One of the highlights was a furnace manufacturer showing off a robotic system that automatically removes hot parts from furnaces. Now, the furnaces themselves weren't actually running, the hull had strict power limits, so sadly no glowing molten metal or on display. But even in just a demo setup, seeing the robot arm in action was pretty cool. Unfortunately, when we tried talking to the representative, our audio got completely drowned out by a ridiculously loud announcement echoing across the entire hall. So instead of interview, I'll just leave their contact details on screen in case anyone here really needs a metal furnace, I guess. 
Overall, this era really showed how broad the exhibition was. It wasn't just about consumer gadgets or cool toys, there was serious industrial tech, the kind of stuff that shapes how factories run and how products are made behind the scenes. It is the side of tech that doesn't always get flash attention, but honestly, is just as impressive. Next up, we bump into FL Sun. You probably know them for their Delta 3D printers, and I managed to grab a quick interview. Hello. Uh, Hi. So, yeah. what's your company and what you are doing? Yeah, our company name is uh, Cao Duo. The mm -hmm. main brand, uh, the, main, the head office is in Zhengzhou, okay. Haolan Province, and uh, uh, the brand name is Fuxi FL Sun. We got a lot of clients call us uh, Florida Sun. So, uh, okay. Yes, like that. And the product we do, we produce, is the uh, is the uh, 3D printers. Mm -hmm. It's but it's a special designs, a data designs structures compared with the uh, Core XY and the uh, uh, I can 3D. So this, so this okay. is the this is the totally different designs. And uh, why do you use Co uh, Delta 3D printers and not Core XY as mm -hmm. uh, entire industry or competitors? Uh, you know, uh, for Delta designs, uh, we have focused in this line since uh, for over 30, 30 uh, years. With your, with your, how uh, many years? With over thirty years. 30. 30? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, but that's you know, compared compare with the Core XY, because we, we leave a lot of imaginations to the to the users, okay. because uh, there are a lot of limitations for XY designs. For okay. example, the speed. Uh, from the first beginning, the speed of the uh, XY designs may be just around 100 to 200. But uh, for XY designs from the first beginning, the, the speed would be just 400. Uh, our first generation is just 400 millimeters per second. Okay. But now now we can do maximum to uh, 1,200 millimeters. I'm, I'm happy that yeah, uh, for, at least one company yeah. keeps it, you know, because yes. early days we saw a lot of yes. Delta printers. Yeah, for they, their printers in this world, there are uh, only a uh, few companies produce yeah, these yeah, designs. Yeah. So like it's pretty cruisers. good that at least yeah. some of them yes. keep the design. Yeah, like uh, only maybe maybe uh, processors in other countries, but in China, we're the number one for the yeah, data for designs. Sure. So, but for uh, but I think that maybe in the futures for these designs, this kind of designs has a lot of has a lot of space for improvement. A big part of the exhibition was focused on B2B and chips. Lots of booths full of ads, brochures, and technical info. Interesting for industry people, but honestly not that eye-catching for a YouTube video. That's why we mostly focused on the 3D printers, because they just look super cool in my opinion. I was expecting to see more humanoid robots. And there were some, but they didn't look that cool and felt more like toys than actual robots. What really stood out is that robots don't need to look like humans. There are plenty of different machines that just get the job done. Overall, I'm really satisfied with the exhibitions and I definitely hope to visit again next year. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. We have got more exhibitions coming up in September. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.